Hype for Godzilla Kong is at an all-time high, and as the fifth theatrical entry in the MonsterVerse, on the 70th anniversary for Godzilla, it has a lot riding on its shoulders. Their recent marketing has been at full capacity, with billboards showing up across the world and countless TV spots releasing to try and draw audiences in. The series has proven to be relatively successful over the years, with Godzilla 2014 earning $529 million, Skull Island with $568 million, King of the Monsters with $387 million, and Godzilla vs. Kong with $470 million, making the MonsterVerse films alone a near $2 billion franchise. And that's not even counting the toys, Blu-ray sales, and merchandise. But will the new empire prove to be successful? Or could it flop? Well, early box office predictions are in, and the results are looking pretty mixed. But first off, for context, what would happen if it did flop, and how much is needed in order to not become a box office disappointment? I see people saying, who cares if it underperforms, because everyone got paid and we still got a film out of it. Well, of course, a financially successful film guarantees future entries, and we as Godzilla fans obviously want more from this franchise. I don't want to have to sit through another content drought like between 2004 and 2014, so there is perfectly valid reasons to want the films to succeed in the box office. So what constitutes as a success? While the budget for the new empire is approximately $160 million, around the same as Godzilla vs. Kong. So it would need to recoup these costs as well as marketing, which can cost up to 1.5 times the film's production budget, meaning the studio may need to earn $400 million before it even begins to make money. And of course, theaters take a cut from the income, as do overseas markets like China, which take an even higher percentage. But there's more to a film's success than the box office. The Godzilla and Kong franchise are highly marketable for things like toys, posters, games, DVDs, streaming sales, and so much more. Even though King of the Monsters didn't recoup production and budget costs, it was still a success through other means. The MonsterVerse toy lines are some of the most popular toys in the market, alongside Jurassic World and Transformers in immense fan followings. But in order for Legendary to foresee a future in the MonsterVerse, they have to see a trend in box office performance that shows they'll continue to make money. The domestic earnings have been diminishing with every movie, and whilst Godzilla vs. Kong earned more overall than Godzilla King of the Monsters, it still didn't surpass it domestically, though that can partially be blamed on the pandemic and the fact it released on HBO Max the same day it released in theaters. So Godzilla Kong needs to beat that trend and earn more than the previous entries to really solidify the MonsterVerse's presence going forward. So in my eyes, if it can surpass $490 million, we can be pretty safe with the future of the series. So what are the early predictions? Well, right now on Box Office Pro, it places the opening weekend at $41 to $50 million, similar to the $47 million opening of King of the Monsters, but significantly lower than 2014's $93 million opening and even Kong Skull Island's $61 million opening. They also predict that the total domestic earnings will be $91 to $140 million which would either put it as the lowest earning domestically or the third highest next to Skull Island. With June Part 2 being incredibly popular, it looks like it may encroach on some of the potential box office, as people are still looking to check out that film over anything new. But with April being a relatively free month, I expect the film to have long legs and earn more than Godzilla vs. Kong and King of the Monsters domestically. And with good word of mouth, it has a chance to become one of the most successful films in the series. So my prediction for the box office total is that Godzilla Kong The New Empire will pull in a modest $490 million, with $120 million coming from the US of A, which combined with toys and merchandise would make Godzilla X Kong a very lucrative product for Legendary and their second highest grossing film of 2024 next to June Part 2. 
I can't imagine a world where this film flops personally. This is the King of the Monsters and the eighth wonder of the world we're talking about. King of the Monsters underperformed because that summer season was incredibly crowded. And whilst this month is somewhat competitive, with June 2, Kung Fu Panda 4 and Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, since the new Empire is releasing on the tail end of this month, it'll have a pretty free opening to properly thrive in that Easter weekend and onwards. The MonsterVerse will continue. In fact, we already heard news about Monarch Season 2 having a potential end of 2025 release, so it's still very popular and has a rabid, dedicated fanbase. And with Minus One just winning the Oscar for Best VFX, all eyes are on the new Empire come March 29th. So will Godzilla X Kong flop? I highly doubt it, at least in a box office sense. It could be destroyed by critics, however, but that's not going to stop people from going to theaters to check out the monster mayhem. Unless it's some Madame Web or Morbius level of unwatchable. It's morbid time. <laughs> but I highly doubt that. And even if this film performs awfully, and I mean like 100 million, 200 million, something where it didn't even make back its production budget and they just decide to stop making films, the MonsterVerse will still continue, will still get comics and potentially even animated TV shows. They didn't stop making Pacific Rim stuff just because Uprising flopped at the box office. But I really doubt that Godzilla Kong The New Empire is gonna flop. If anything, it might be one of the most successful Godzilla films ever made. We asked you residents over on Twitter how much you think Godzilla Kong is going to earn at the worldwide box office. And this is what you guys had to say. Maji Warstu says, 10 million. Brilliant. Madison Russell says, just throwing a random number, 437 million. Which, yeah, is a bit low, but it's not impossible considering the box office for King of the Monsters. Barami1988 says, If it's legitimately fun and awesome with minimal writing issues, I can see a solid 500 to 550 million. As long as the writing is better than the last two entries and the spectacle is immaculate, it'll do well. I think that's a completely fair assumption. 500 to 550 million seems pretty likely. General McBride says, At least two dollars. Yeah, uh, I mean, you'd hope so. The Film Jump says, If it reviews similar to GVK, 600 million on the high end. If it reviews better and word of mouth helps, it could hit 700 million. But I don't know, Godzilla seems like a bigger IP now than it ever has been. Plus, no COVID restrictions. Yeah, I mean, it's a very complicated question. I'm crossing my fingers it's gonna get more than Skull Island and become the highest grossing in the MonsterVerse. But, I mean, really, who knows? Darkmare says 1 billion at the box office, which is, yeah, I mean, we can dream. And Dominic Spaziri says, I think you're looking at another 500 million like most of the MonsterVerse. I think that because it actually can be in theaters and also not streaming, it'll do way better than Godzilla vs. Kong. But I think this franchise is what it is, and I think it'll forever be 400 to 500 million, which, yeah, is completely fair. As I was saying, I think it's going to be in the late 400 millions, which would still be pretty good. I mean, that's better than most Marvel or DC films these days. But what is your prediction for Godzilla Kong's box office? Is it high? Low? Let us know in the comment section down below. Hey, that rhymed. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big old Kong-sized thumbs up. And for more Godzilla Kong content, subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.